Lenses in PhotoPaint can be used to apply non-destructive effects or adjustments either to an entire photo or to an editable area within a photo. In this video, I'll demonstrate a few examples of what lenses can do. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial. I'll start with this photo, on which I want to try out some effects. If I go straight to the Effects menu, choose Art Strokes Sketchpad, adjust the settings and apply, the effect has changed the photo itself and I no longer have the original photo. And once applied, I can't go back and change effect settings. If I then apply an adjustment, such as Adjust, Hue Saturation Lightness, the effect is applied on top of whatever effect was there before. I'll undo to return to the original photo. A better way to try out effects or adjustments is to use lenses. I'll choose Object, Create, New Lens. The categories and effects are the same ones I would see in the Adjust and Effect menus, and I'll try Art Strokes, Watercolor. Preview is checked so I can see changes in real time. After adjusting the settings, I'll click OK, which adds a new object in the Objects Inspector. This new object is a lens indicated by this icon. If I double click the lens icon, I can change the settings. To add a new lens, I could go back to the object menu or click the new lens icon at the bottom of the inspector. I'll try blur, Gaussian blur with a low radius. Now both lenses are listed and I can use the eye icon to turn each on and off or turn off both to see the original photo. I can also change the order of the lenses by dragging and this is how the image looks if the blur had been applied first and then the watercolor. If I decide I don't like an effect, I can right click on it and choose delete. In this example, I want to apply an effect only to part of the photo, so I need to add an editable area in the form of a mask. From the mask tool group, I'll choose ellipse mask and drag to surround the icing of this cupcake. To adjust the mask location, I'll use the mask transform tool and drag nodes. For a softer mask border, I'll go back to the Ellipse Mask tool, click Feather Mask in the Interactive Property bar, and set the feathering to the outside. The red overlay shows the gradual transition along the mask border. Because there is an active mask, when I choose Object, Create, New Lens, the Create Lens from Mask box is checked, which means the lens will be applied only within the mask border. If this were unchecked, the lens would be applied to the entire photo. I'll choose Camera, Colorize, Adjust Settings, and click OK. A nice feature of a lens is that it can be moved, and the effect will be applied wherever the lens is. The lens is the active object, and the Pick tool is active, so I can move the lens to another cupcake and adjust its size. I can also copy this lens, paste in the copy, move the copied lens, adjust it, and change the lens effect. For my final example, I want to apply effects to the grapes in this photo and different effects to the rest of the photo. To mask just the grapes, I'll choose Smart Selection Mask, set the mode to Additive, and drag the mouse within the area I want to mask. I can click or drag over any bits that aren't already included. I have some small holes, so I'll choose Mask, Mask Outline, Remove Holes. To soften the mask border, I'll choose Mask, Mask Outline, Feather, and set the feathering to the inside. I'll add a new lens and apply Art Strokes Pointillist. To apply a second effect to the same editable area, I'll need to create a new lens from the same mask. I'll keep the current lens active, choose Mask Load, and choose the active mask. For this lens, I'll use Distort Wet Paint. I now want to apply a sepia tone to the rest of the image. I'll make active either lens and use Mask Load to reuse it. I want this mask to include the areas between the grapes and the photo edges, so I'll choose Mask, Invert Mask. And the effect this time is Camera, Sepia Toning. If I'm not so sure about the effects on the grapes, I can try something new. I'll turn off both grape effects, keep one lens active to load its mask, and try a Hue Saturation Lightness adjustment. 
Now I can see how this effect looks with either of the previous effects added to it. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on lenses in PhotoPaint. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial.